Hello everyone, welcome to Elevate Key. If you haven't done yet, please hit that subscribe button below so that you will never miss any video of mine. In this video, I would like to cover how can we develop a real-time BDD automation framework from scratch using Selenium with Java as the programming language. Throughout this video, you can find the concepts of we'll see what BDD basically is and what is the purpose of Maven and TestNG in the automation framework. Also, we'll be seeing how we can create a real-time BDD automation framework using the Java programming language through multiple stages. So, let's get started. First, let me say what BDD actually is. So, you might be wondering whether it is a tool or a process or a practice. So, I would say BDD basically is a software development process which follows few practices to build a better end product using the tools like Cucumber and JBehave. And if you are wondering from when and where it started, to be in short, back in 2006, Daniel Terhorst explained BDD in his first article, Introducing BDD. And it basically evolved from the thought process of how to write the test based on the behavior rather than how to test. So, as you know, in TDD, we'll be focusing on how to test an application. But in BDD, we write tests based on the behavior of the application. This is the main difference between the BDD and the TDD. So, we can say that BDD is the extension of TDD, but it mainly focuses on the behavior of the application. We have got this template of as a I and so that for writing the user stories. And from there, we got it grew to given when then. So in BDD, we will be using mainly given when then keywords to capture an user stories acceptance criteria in an executable form. So now you have got the idea of what BDD is and the origin of BDD. Let's see how to follow BDD and what are its advantages? To be precise, the whole process of this BDD can be explained in the three main practices, which are discovery, formulation, and automation. So let's see each of them in detail. In BDD, first what we get is a user story. Then it goes to the first phase, which is the discovery phase, where we have the requirements as a user story and then all the teams, mainly the three amigos, which are QA, Dev, and PO. So these three mainly brainstorm about the requirement and talk about the change to the system through examples of a new functionality to explore and discover. And finally, all comes up with the agreement of what the expected output is, which is known as definition of done, DOD. And then it goes to the formulation phase. And in this, we'll be documenting the examples which we have discussed in the discovery phase in a way they can be automated and also check for the agreement. And then we have the last phase, which is automation, where we will be implementing the behavior which we have described in these documents through the examples. And this starts with the automated test to guide the development of code. Then what we get is a working software as the end product. So this is the whole process how the BDD can be implemented. So you can see that through this whole process, BDD is mainly aiming to collaborate and develop the end product rapidly by following the small iterations. So which is basically what we do in the agile process. So now let's see what BDD has to do in the agile process. If your team is already following the agile, the thing we can say is that the BDD doesn't replace the Agile methodology. What it actually does is that it enhances the existing Agile process by many ways. One is that within the discovery phase, it helps the team to have the right conversations at the right time so that you can spend minimum amount of time in the meetings and maximum amount on the valuable code you produce. And the other is that it reveals the gaps in our understandings through the brainstorming sessions and lets us know where we need more info before we know what to do. And also by writing the examples using the Gherkins, which is based on the common English language, 
we are establishing a common shared language across all the teams to talk about the system so this is helping in better understanding of the requirement and better collaboration through this you can say that BDD using all these practices is enhancing the existing agile process instead of replacing the process. So the next question we get is how to implement BDD. So this is where we got Cucumber and JBHIP coming to picture. So Cucumber and JBHIP are basically the tools which we use for designing our scenarios in BDD. To conclude what you can say is that BDD is a software development process which uses Cucumber or JBHAVE tool to enhance the existing agile process to build the better end products. Let's see the real time scenario of how BDD can be implemented in a project. So let's get started. Just to remind you for the BDD to be followed we have agile process as a prerequisite. So it all starts with the PO. So PO comes up with the user story. User story basically contains the details of what is the change we want to achieve through the particular iteration. So this will be the input for the next coming phase, which is the discovery. And in this, all the teams will collaborate to discuss about this particular user story. And to be precise, we have the three amigos mainly involved in this meeting so which are the dev team qa team and the people and in some projects we do have a technical lead and also based on the user story we'll be adding the dependency teams into these meetings so if this requirement change is dependent on the other teams let's say if it is dependent on the db team or else the ops team so we will be adding their respective teams into these meetings so in this meeting, we'll be discussing about this change through the examples of what to be explored and discovered. So by this, it reveals the gap between the understanding of the requirement and let the team know where they need more info before starting. it. So each will be presenting their understandings through the examples. And if there is any other info that is needed, PO will get back with that info. And by the end of these meetings, all comes up with the agreement of what the expected output is, which we call it as definition of done. So we got the input as the user story and the output as definition of done. And the examples of the features, how it should behave. So this goes to the next phase where the test team will take these feature examples and design their automation tests and the development team will develop their code to implement these features. So once the development team is done with their code, they'll be deploying the code and the testing team will test this application which was deployed. And once we get the sign off of the testing, we'll be delivering the application to the end user. So this is how the process repeats. So by this, we'll be completing one iteration and then we'll be starting the next iteration in a similar fashion. So this is how BDD will be implemented in the organization. Here, what you can see is that through these meetings, we are reducing the gap between the understanding of the requirement, which will not happen in the regular linear models like waterfall model. And also we are designing the test based on the behavior of the application. So all the features which we get here, as the examples are based on the behavior of the application rather than how to test it. So development team will write the code based on how the application should behave. And the testing team do follow the same process of developing the automation test based on how it should behave. So we are making the difference in developing the product by thinking of how it should behave rather than how to test it. Also, we do follow the other important process in the BDD, which is documenting the results which we get. So whatever we have written and whatever we have learned through this process, we'll be documenting all of them in any of the shared resources so that it will be visible across all the teams and can be used as inputs for the next coming iterations. So this is the whole process of how BDD actually works. I hope you guys got an idea on how the things happens in real time. 
I want to discuss about Maven as a build management tool. I'll be covering what is Maven and where and why it is used. So if you just go to the official site of the Maven, maven.apache.org. So this is the official site of the Maven and here you can see what Maven actually is. So here you can see that it states Maven as a software project management and comprehension tool and it is based on the concept of project object model and it can manage the project's build and reporting and documentation from the central piece of the information. So this is what Maven is. It's a basically a software project management tool which we use for managing our project and for building the project. In the automation projects which we generally work on, Maven is basically used as a project management tool in common. Let's see what are the advantages we get by using Maven as a project management tool. The first advantage we get by using Maven is it provides the easy way to build a project. So in Maven, you have specific commands to run the project or build a project or clean a project. So using those commands, you can easily build a project. So this is one of the feature it provides. And the next is it allows integration with the source control systems. So if you want your project to be integrated with any of the source control systems like git or bitbucket to maintain the code that can be done using the maven and the next is it helps in packing of the project so for example if you want to pack your project as a jar file or uh, some other format so maven provides us the feature of packing it and the next is that we can add jars and other dependencies easily so let's see what does this mean basically in the maven project directory. in my eclipse i have created a maven project so this is the project which i have created and if i just expand that here you can see src main java src test java so the folder structure was in a defined format so this is one of the advantages of using mavens uh, that it helps us in structuring the project folders now let's see how we can add jars to the project without downloading them using Maven. Let's say if you want to use Selenium or Cucumber in your project. There are two ways in which you can achieve this. First is that you can go to the official site of the Selenium or Cucumber and then you can download the respective jars and place those jars in the project library. And the other way is that using Maven, what you can do is you need not to go to the official site and download the jars. You can just provide the dependency of those particular jars in this pom.xml file. So pom.xml is the file which is provided by the Maven by default. And in this file, if you just add the dependency of the tool which you want to use, so it will go to that repository and download those jar files for you and it places those jars in this maven dependencies library so whatever dependency you have defined under this pom.xml file those will be added in this maven dependencies so that you can use them so in this way you need not to go to the site and then download the jars externally and place them in your library maven is doing all that for you only thing you need to do is that you need to add that particular dependency in your form.xml file. Now let's see how does this Maven work. So whenever you create a Maven project, you get the pom.xml file by default and this is the file which Maven reads and downloads all the dependencies defined in this file from the central repository to the local repository. Here what is happening is we are installing Maven in our machine and then maven is reading the pom.xml file in our project and then it is downloading all those dependencies which were defined in this pom.xml from the central repository of the maven and then it is storing those in our local repository now you got to know what is maven and what are the advantages of using it and how does it actually gets the zars for us without downloading now if you want to use Maven in our project, how to do that? For setting up Maven in your mission, please refer to this video of how to install and set up Maven where I have explained how to download the Maven and do the setup in your mission. I hope by this you got an idea of what Maven is and how does it work. I want to show you guys how to create a Maven project.
So for our automation framework, we are using Marvin as a build management tool. Let's see how to create a Marvin project in an Eclipse IDE. So I have been in my Eclipse, which I have downloaded in my previous sessions. If you want to know how to download Eclipse, you can just refer to my video of how to set up Eclipse in our mission. So the first step of creating a project is go to file and under that select new and then select the project. Here it is prompting up with the options of which kind of project we want to create and we want to create a Maven project. So we will be selecting the option of Maven project and then click on next. So in this window, what it is asking me is that use the default workspace location. So the project which you are going to create, if you want to store it in the same workspace location, which Eclipse is using, you can select this option. Or else, if you want to save it in a specific location, you can deselect this option and click on the browse button. So you can select the location where you want to store it. As of now, I want to store it in my desktop, let's say. So I'll be selecting the folder as desktop and click on select folder. Now click on next. So here you can see that it is showing me the list of the artifact IDs and for creating a Maven basic structure we need the Maven artifact ID of quick start. So let's just search for that quick start artifact ID which will be under the org apache maven. So, so this is the artifact ID which we need maven archetype quick start. And I'll be selecting that and clicking on next. And here I need to enter the project name details. Under the group ID, we will be giving the packaging structure how we want it to be. I want my packaging structure in the project to be com.bdd.test. And next, under the artifact ID, we need to give the name of the project we want. So let's say I want my project to be named as test automation BDD framework. So once you are done with this, click on the finish. So here you can see it is creating a project for us. And when you just navigate to the package explorer, you can see the test automation BDD framework project is created. So just click on this arrow so that it will expand you the project. And you, here you can see the first is SRC main Java and the next folder is SRC test Java. And when you just expand these folders, you can also see it has created a sample Java class for you. So Maven basically by default gives you this folder structure of SRC main Java and SRC test Java with a sample Java class. But we don't want to use this uh, Maven created class. We are going to create our own classes. So we can just go and delete these classes. And next what we have is JRE system libraries, which are all the Java libraries for this project. So this is how we create a Maven project in Eclipse IDE. I want to discuss about pom.xml file in the Maven project which we have created in the previous video and also how to run a test using Maven. So let's see what pom.xml file first is and later come to Maven dependencies. So let's open this pom.xml file. So Maven will be creating as a pom.xml file by default. So with these values. So here you can see it is a XML file basically. So first it has this group ID. This is the ID which we have given while creating the project and same goes with this artifact ID. So this is a test name which we have given for our project and under the name tag we got the artifact ID which we have given and the later is the URL tag. So here you can give the URL of the project for example let's say in future we have integrated our project with any of the source management tool. If you have created a project repo in your Git, so the same URL, you can just give it under this URL tag. 
and next is we have the properties tag so under this we can define the properties we uh, we want to use in this form.xml file next we have got dependencies tag so under the dependencies tag we will be adding all the dependencies which we want to use in this project so let's say if i want to use selenium in my project what i can do is that instead of going to selenium site and downloading the jar files i can just directly add this selenium maven dependency from the maven central repository under this dependencies tag and the maven automatically downloads that to you under this maven dependencies library by default maven provides us with this zunit dependency we have the zunit dependency defined under this dependency tag and the same zunit jar is downloaded in this maven dependencies library under the build tag we have the plugins needed for running our scripts so we need basically maven surefire plugin and maven compiler plugin for running our scripts so we can add those plugins under this build tag you can see that maven is giving us by default some of the plugins as well now for our automation project i just want to create a two more folder structures so i want to store all the resources related to this project in src main resources folder and all the resources to the testing in the src test folder so let me just go ahead and create these two folder structures for creating the folder structure just you need to right click on this project go to new and then under this you have to select the source folder so we can give the name of the folder under the folder name so i want to create a folder name as src main resources so once done click on finish so you can see here the folder is created for me in the same way we are going to do for the other folder so i want the name to be src test resources and click on finish so now we got the basic folder structure we need for our framework in the next step let's just see if we are able to just run this project so for that i'll be creating a sample test just going to new and then select class i'll be giving the name of the class as just a sample test test sample and then click on finish in this class i'll be creating a sample test method just to check if we can run our maven project so for that i'll be using test annotation of the junit so we have already junit libraries downloaded by the maven by default so we can use those annotations and i'll be creating a sample method public void test1 and it uh, let's say just return a it just prints out me maven check so we need to import this junit packages for the test annotation okay we have created a sample test let's see how to run this test in a maven for running it we need to use this pom.xml file so go to pom.xml file then right click on it then go to run as and in this you can select maven test here you can see it is downloading all the maven repositories so basically when you run the test for the first time it needs to download all the jars which we have defined in the form.xml file to the maven dependencies so it is downloading all the jars you can see the execution is complete so you can check if you got this maven check printed in your execution i'll be discussing about what is test ng and what is its purpose in automation testing framework and also we'll be discussing what are the features that test ng has got for us so let's get started to start with what test ng actually is so test ng is basically a test execution framework for java programming languages and it was mostly used by the developers for developing and executing their unit test cases 
from this you can say that test ng basically helps in writing and executing the test so this same feature we have integrated in our automation framework to write and execute the test scenarios so for using the test ng you need to create a test ng.xml file so this file basically contains all the parameters and the classes so in this file xml file you are going to say which class you want to execute for the framework and it finds out the test it has to execute using the annotations so test ng have some particular annotations and using that annotations it will execute the test so this is what test ng comprises of it has an xml file which has the details of the classes it has to execute and those classes will have the annotations of the test ng defined so that based on the order of the annotation the test execution goes on and the application will be tested first is at the rate of before suite so we have at the rate of before suite at the start of the execution so if we have any method defined with the annotation at the rate of before suite that method will be executed first that will be followed by before test annotation and then we have before class annotation and then we have before method and followed by the at the rate of test and the similar fashion goes for at the rate of after annotations as well by this you can say how the test execution goes on in the test engine so now let's see what are the benefits we get by using the test engine so these are all the features test engine has to offer so first is that set dependencies for example in your automation framework you have a login scenario then you have a booking a flight scenario so for booking a flight in the application you need to be first logging to the application so here booking a flight scenario is dependent on the login scenario so using the test ng what you can do is set the dependency and tell that flight booking scenario is dependent on the login scenario later we can have the assertion so whenever you want to verify any of the condition in your application you can add the assertions so test ng provides lot of assertions for us so we can make use of these assertions to verify the conditions later we have listeners test ng provides us with multiple listeners and one of the best is that if you want to know why the scenarios got failed in your automation test run you can add a listener for the failed test scenarios to take a screenshot by that it will take the screenshot for all the failed scenarios and you will get to know the reason why it got failed so next is parameters using the parameters you can add the values to your framework so you can define the values for example if i want my test execution to happen in chrome and firefox browser and the browser parameter is variable here so when i want to execute my uh, scripts in a chrome browser i'll be setting a parameter called browser and i'll be passing it to to the test ng xml suite and i'll define the value so based on that value it will execute in that particular browser later we have test grouping so what does grouping means so grouping means it will group all your scenarios based on that particular one keyword let's say if i want to do the smoke test after the deployment is done so what i can do is for all the scenarios which i want to perform the smoke test i can add a group name as smoke so only smoke test will be executed in this way you can group your automation scenarios using test ng and later we have data providers by using data providers in test ng you can pass the test data to your scenario and later we have parallel execution so using test ng we can also achieve the parallel execution so let's say if you have 10 scenarios and you want to execute five scenarios one in one browser and at the same time you want to execute another five scenarios in the other browser instance you can achieve that using this parallel execution process in testing and then we are left with set priority test ng also provides us with the feature of set, setting the priority for the test so you can use the keyword priority and set it as 1 2 3 and so on so based on the priority the scenarios will be executed using these features of test ng will enhance our automation framework so that is the reason we are going with the test ng in our automation framework let's see create a test ng xml file in our automation framework so i am in eclipse ide and this is the framework which we have created in the previous videos using maven so we are going to use test ng as the test execution for our framework and so for using the test ng we need a test ng.xml file created so let's see how to create it for creating the file 
right click on the project go to new and then select file so here you have to give the name of the file which you are going to create so i am going to give the name as test underscore test ng dot xml so dot xml format is very important because the file we are going to create should be of xml format so i am going to click on finish so here you can see xml file got created now we need to add the xml file with the values so for what you can do is add the tags manually by yourself or you can just browse for the sample xml test ng template let's say sample test ng xml file so under the results you can see test ng.org so this is the official site of test ng you can just select this and it will provide you the basic sample template of the test ng file which you can use so let's scroll down so here you can see that this is the basic template which you can use for test ng in any of the project so i'm going to copy this and paste it so now you are done with creating let's see each of those tags in detail so first is that we have the suite tag so under the suite you are going to give the name of this particular suite so we are we can give it as test suite later we have got this test tag so under this test tag we'll be giving the details about the test which we are going to run so let's say if we are going to run a smoke test i'm going to give the name of the test as smoke test and for this smoke test what are the classes you want to run you can give the name of those classes under this so as of now i doesn't have any class created for my test so i'm going to leave the name as it is and when i am done with creating my test class i'm going to come and add this particular class name so in the similar way what you can do is you can create a multiple test so that test can include classes so under the classes you can give the multiple class names so right now we are going with only one test class so let's delete this other test and save it as we are using maven as a build management tool in this maven project we can add test ng using the maven test ng dependencies so let's go to google so let's search for the test ng dependencies so test ng maven dependency you got the results from this maven repository.com so this is the site official site where it contains all the maven repository stored so let's click on this and here it is listing me out all the different versions of this test ng dependency so it is always better to go with the latest one and also the version which we go we need to make sure that it is a stable version so let me go with 7.4.0 So this is the dependency of the test ng in Maven. So let me copy this, and what we need to do is add this dependency in our pom.xml file. So I'm opening my pom.xml file. Maven by default gives you the JUnit dependency. So in your project, you can you you can't use JUnit and test ng together. To choose either JUnit or test ng as your execution tool, I'm going to use test ng, and I'm deleting this JUnit. So let me paste the test ng dependency. You can save it here. Under this dependency, you can remove this scope tag because when you set the scope to test, test ng scope will be set to test only. So we don't want to do it, and it might create some error. So in order to avoid them, we are going to remove the scope. Now we have got test ng downloaded in our project. And apart from this, also you can download the test ng in your Eclipse. So for downloading test ng in your Eclipse. Uh, please refer to my video of how to download test ng in eclipse id so after downloading test ng in your eclipse what you can do is now let's create a simple test class and see if we are able to run using the test ng so i'm going to src test java folder and i'm going to click on new and create a class and i'm giving the name of the class as test sample and click on finish I got the class created. So for adding our test using the test ng, we need to use the test ng annotations. So let's use a basic test ng annotation, which is of at the rate of test. 
and I am going to create a method under this test method and let's just print that test ng check now you need to import the test ng to your class so that it got resolved so this is the class which we have created for running our test so what we need to do is that before running it we need to add this class in our test ng xml so we need to tell our test ng that Okay, this is the class I have created with my test and I want you to include it. So for that, we need to go to testng.xml and then go to classes and you need to give the name of the class. So my test class name is test sample. So by this test ng, we will come to know that, okay, this is the test class which I have to run. So for running, you will be going to the test class and then right click on it, go to run as. And then you can select the option of test ng test. We can see that launching test sample. So the test is getting launched. The execution has started. So you, here you can see we got this test ng checking. So it has printed the test ng checking. That means our test got passed. Also, using test ng provides with the advantage of getting the reports. So if you can see, click on this icon test ng here, you can see it is telling us all the scripts were passed, which is of green. So all test, it is showing the test sample is the class which you have run and in that test method is the method which you have run and it all got passed. So apart from that, it also provides us execution report. So now go to project and click on refresh. So you should be able to see this test output folder created. So this is the folder which is created by the test ng and when you just click expand it you can see here index.htm try to open the file by double clicking on it let's open that in a chrome browser so that we can view it easily so here you can see it so it is telling me the path of the report which it is there and how many tests i have run so i have run one test and it is showing me the test name so here it, it also showing us the groups so we can add groups in our test and run using the test ng. So I didn't add any groups here. So it is showing the group 0. And in the results, if you can see it, it we have executed one method and that method got passed. So this is all about how to create a test ng.xml file in your project and how to execute using the test ng. I'll be explaining the design of the BDD automation framework, which we are doing in this whole playlist. So let's get started. So the first file we have in this automation BDD framework is pom.xml file. So this is basically an XML file and we get this pom.xml file created by default for every Maven project. So what does this file contains? So this pom.xml file stores all the dependencies which you want to use for the project like Selenium, Cucumber, TestNG. All of those dependencies will be defined in this pom.xml file and apart from that we do define the plugins which we want to use for executing our scenarios. So this is what this pom.xml file consists of. Later we have got test runner file. So test runner file is basically a Java file and it is kind of a main method in Java. So you know that for any of the Java, the execution starts from the main method. So in the similar way, for the Cucumber project, we have this test runner file where we will be defining all our R's attributes like the tags, features and the steps and we'll define what scenarios we want to run so that it will pick those scenarios and starts the execution. So you can say that execution basically starts from this test runner file. And later we have got hooks file. So we have concept of hooks in Cucumber where it is providing us with the at the rate of before and at the rate of after hooks. So in the at the rate of before, we will be defining the code logic which we want to implement before executing any of the scenario. And in the similar way, in at the rate of after annotation, we'll be defining the code logic which we want to implement after execution of any scenario. 
So once you get the scenario identified from the test runner file, it will be looking if there were any hooks defined like at the rate of before so that it will execute that code before executing the actual scenario. So the hooks file is also a .java file and next is the feature file. So this is actually a dot feature file and it is the place where we'll be designing all our scenarios in the Cucumber BDD framework. So we'll be writing all the scenarios for the application in the feature files using the Gherkin's language. And also Cucumber provides us with the facility of adding the test data as well in this feature files. So once it identifies the scenarios in the test runner, it will execute the hooks. And after that, it starts with the execution by identifying the scenarios in the feature file. And next, the execution goes to step definition file. So step definition file is a .java file where we will be implementing every test step we have designed in this feature file. So for any scenario, whatever the steps we have designed, all of them we need to implement in this step definition file for the execution to go on. So from the scenario identification, it finds that scenario and goes to every step and checks for the same step in the step definition file. And the next part of the execution goes to page implementation file. So page implementation file is also a .java file. And in this file, we'll be defining the actual logic of the code for all the actions we want to perform for a particular test in the application. So it contains all the Java code implementing the logic of the test. And later we have got the web driver util files. This is also a .java file and in this file we'll be defining the web driver which we want to use. We'll be creating the object of the web driver and also we'll set the properties of the web driver we want like maximizing the window and deleting the cookies and setting the desired capabilities for the browser. So everything related to the driver will be set in this web driver util file. And the code from the web driver util file will be used by this page implementation file. And for the next part of the execution, we have the Selenium support functions file. This is even a Java file and this file actually contains all the Selenium support functions like click method and send keys method. So, so we'll be implementing all the methods related to the Selenium so that we can use it anywhere. The page implementation file will be making use of this Selenium support functions to perform any of the action for the test. And in the later part of the execution, we have got default environment dot properties. So this is a dot properties file. And in this file, we will be defining all the environment properties related to the application. So that can be of the URL of the application, username, password, and the environment we want to run and the DB we want to connect. So all of those properties related to that application will be defined in this dot properties file. And finally, we have got the log4j.properties file. And the purpose of the log4j in the automation framework is that to get the logs of the execution we do. So using the log4j.properties file, we'll be implementing the log4j to get all the logs for the scenarios which we are executing. So precisely, these are all the files which we are going to create and design in our future videos. And when you keep any of the scenario for the execution, you can say that first it will download all the dependencies using this pom.xml file and then it will go to the test runner file to identify which test scenario it has to run. So once it finds the condition which it has to look for, then it will go to the hooks file where it will execute any of the hooks like at the rate of before which we have defined. And once that is executed, it will go and look for the scenario with this particular condition we have defined in this test runner file. And once it finds the scenario with that particular tag, it will start the execution and look for the test steps it has to perform. And for every step, it will look in the step definition file for that particular step implementation. So once it finds the implementation of that step, then it will execute the code logic for that step, which we have defined in this page implementation file. And this page implementation file will make use of the web driver util file and the Selenium support functions to call the driver and perform the actions which we want to do for a test. So this is how the execution flow goes on in a BDD Cucumber framework. 
Now let's see how to add the selenium and cucumber dependencies in this pom.xml file for the project which we have created in the previous videos. So let's get started. Now let me go to my Eclipse IDE. This is the Maven project which we have created in the previous videos. So now let's go to pom.xml file. And as you can see here, we have got only the test ng dependency as of now. Now let's try to add selenium and the cucumber dependencies as well. For that, first we need to go to Maven central repository and look for those dependencies. So I'll be searching with selenium Maven dependency. And this is the Maven repository site which holds all the dependencies. So let's navigate to that. Here you can see that it is showing me the dependencies list based on the version. It is always recommended to go with the stable and the latest version. So if you notice here, this version has got the highest uses. So let's go with this version. So this is the Selenium dependency we have got for the version of 3.141.59. So let's copy this dependency and paste it in our pom.xml file. In the similar way, let's try to add the cucumber dependencies as well. Search for the cucumber dependency, cucumber maven dependency. And here you can see we have got the maven repository site showing the cucumber dependencies. So let me click on this. So it is showing me the list of all the dependencies related to the cucumber. And for any of the project, we have the three main dependencies which we need to add. First is we are using Java as a programming language. So we'll be adding Cucumber JVM Java. So let's go to this and I'll be going with the latest version. And I'm copying it and pasting it in my pom.xml file. So we are done with the Cucumber Java dependency. Now we'll be adding Cucumber Core dependency. One other point you need to keep in mind while adding this Cucumber dependencies is that so for the previous dependency, which is Cucumber Java, which you have added, you have selected the version as 6.10.4. So you need to keep in mind that for every Cucumber related dependencies, the version should always be the same or else we'll be facing issues while executing our scripts. So we need to keep in mind that every dependency related to Cucumber while we are adding, we need to make sure we are selecting the version as 6.10.4. So for this core dependency also, I'll be going with the same version 6.10.4. So let me copy this and I'll be pasting in my pom.xml file. And later we need to add the Cucumber JVM. I will be selecting the version as 6.10.4 and I will be copying it and pasting in my pom.xml file. So now we are done with adding the basic cucumber dependencies we need. And apart from this, as we are using test ng in our project, so we need to add the cucumber JVM test ng dependency as well. So so this dependency is needed only when you use the test ng in your project. I will be selecting the same version 6.10.4. By this we are done with adding the cucumber dependency. Let's see how to design scenarios in the feature file using cucumber. Also I will be explaining what tags are in cucumber and its importance and the different keywords we have in Cucumber. To start off, as you know that Cucumber is the tool we use to design scenarios in the BDD framework. And the scenarios will be written in the file with the extension dot feature. So these are called the feature files. Now let's see how to design scenarios in this feature file. To answer that, Cucumber has provided us with the few keywords using which we can design the scenarios in the simple English language called Gherkins. And the most common used keywords out of all are given, when, and then. And in the feature file, the scenario always starts in this format. First, it will have the feature keyword where we'll be giving the description of the feature which we are going to test. And that is followed by scenario keyword. So in the scenario keyword, we'll be giving the description of the test name. And later we have the 
given keyword in which we'll be describing the context of what we are doing. So let's say uh, we have a login scenario and we want to enter the username and the password of the application and click on submit. So in this, what we have got is the URL of the application. So in the given keyword, we'll be giving the user navigates to the application. So we are saying that we got the URL of the application, which is the context we define in this given keyword. And in the when keyword, we'll always define whatever action we want to perform. So let's say in this login scenario, I want to enter the username and password of the application. So that can be added using this when keyword. And that is followed by then keyword. In the then keyword, we'll be defining the outcome we are going to expect. So in this login application, the outcome we are expecting is when we click on submit, it has to navigate to the login page. So that can be defined under this then keyword. So this is the basic skeleton, how we design a scenario in the feature file. And here you can see the screenshot of the scenario that was written in the feature file. So if you see the sample test scenario, here we have started with the feature keyword and that is followed by the scenario. And then we have used the given keyword and when keyword and then keyword to design the scenarios. Apart from the given when then keywords, Cucumber also provides us few other keywords. So let's see each of them in detail. First is the scenario outline. The scenario outline is basically used when you want to pass the test data in your feature file using the examples keywords. So when you, whenever you are using the examples keyword, you have to define your scenario using the scenario outline instead of defining it as scenario. And the next is background keyword. This keyword is used when you want to define the common steps across the feature. So let's say in the particular feature file, we have a login to the application has a common step. So that can be defined under this background keyword so that we need, we need not to write it in every scenario. And once we define under the background keyword, it will be called in every test scenario we write in this particular feature file. Later, we have got the end keyword. This keyword is mainly used when you want to combine two conditions. So that can be used when you are using given the condition and then and you want to add any other condition then you will be using this end keyword before the test. So end keyword can be used to define that step. And the last one we have is this examples keyword. So as we discussed here while defining the scenario outline. So examples keyword is basically used to give all the test data to your feature file. So if we go to the previous slide and see now, you can say that. So first here we got is the feature. And now for this scenario, I want to give the test data in the feature file itself. So for that, what I'm going to do is use this examples keyword to define the test data I want to use in this feature file. And also, instead of using the scenario keyword, you need to use the scenario outline to give the description of that particular test scenario. So these are all the most used keywords in the Cucumber. Now let's see what are tags in Cucumber and why they are important. In Cucumber, tags are the user defined keywords which will be prefixed by at the rate of. So tags always starts with at the rate of and the example you can say is at the rate of smoke test. So here smoke test is the user defined variable and we are giving at the rate of to define that this is a tag which we want to define for that particular scenario. So where we basically use these tags in Cucumber is uh, let's say if I want to execute the smoke test scenarios. So while designing the scenarios what I can do is if if I want that particular scenario to be executed under the smoke test, I'll be adding the tag of smoke test. Now the question we get is why we have to use the tags and what is the advantage we get by using them. So first advantage is that so you can organize all the scenarios and also the feature files using these tags. And apart from that, if you give a particular tag to that scenario, it will execute all the scenarios which were defined under that tag it will allow you to execute the multiple scenarios and the same will be followed by the features as well. 
and the other one has we already discussed it will allow us to group the scenarios so you can give this grouping like if you want to group a smoke test scenarios or a regression scenarios you can use that particular tag for the respective group and define those scenarios now you might get the doubt that uh, how many tags can i define for a particular scenario or a feature so there is actually no limit to define the tag so you can define as many tags as you want in cucumber for any particular scenario or a feature file so in this screenshot you can see clearly the way we have defined the tags for in a feature file so first we can define the tag either at the feature level if you define a tag above the feature so that will execute all the scenarios that were under this feature and the later one we have got is scenario level tags so under this scenario level tags we will be defining the tag at the scenario level so here chapter 1 validation is defined for this particular scenario and when you want to execute this particular scenario you can use this chapter 1 validation tag to run this scenario and apart from these two you can also define tags at the examples level so as discussed previously in Q we use the examples keyword to give the test data so you can pass the multiple test data sets as well and if you want to differentiate that multiple sets of test data you, you can use the tags at the examples level so that it will execute only the particular test data by this video i hope you are clear on how to design a scenario in the feature file and how to use this tags in cucumber and also the keywords which we have got to design a scenario in cucumber so that's it for this video guys thanks for watching the video hope you learned something new today please do like share and subscribe the channel see you in the next video let's try to design scenarios in the feature file using the gherkins language so let me open my eclipse and this is the project which we have been working from the previous videos so the scenarios in the automation framework comes as a resource so these scenarios are related to testing of the application so what we will be doing is we will be creating those scenarios under the src test resources because in the src test resources we will be storing all the test related resources so under this i will be creating a folder with the name features okay and under this features folder we are going to place all our feature files now what i'll do is create a new feature file under this features folder so i'll be going to new and it is a feature file so what we need to select is file option and let me give the feature file name as demo1 feature and the feature file always ends up with the extension dot feature now i will be clicking on finish so here you can see cucumber has already populated us with some information so first is that it is saying you can give the author name details and the keyword summary and as we discussed the scenario can be started with the feature keyword and then that will be followed by the scenario keyword where we'll be giving the description of the test scenario and then that will be followed by given when and then and also we can use this end and but keywords to connect this given when then steps and it has also mentioned that you can use this scenario outline when you want to pass the test data using this examples keyword so it is telling us the info about what the feature file can consist of and how we can design the feature file also it has provided us with this sample scenarios as well so we are going to create our own scenarios so let's just uh, remove this so as we discussed before the feature file always starts with the keyword feature here we will be giving the description of the functionality this feature consists of so let's say demo one features and now that will be followed by this scenario keyword and for this scenario keyword we will be giving the description of the test name which we want to perform now let's see first what is the scenario which i want to test 
So the scenario I want to test here is I'll be navigating to this website and then I'll be clicking on this chapter 1 link. And what I'll do is verify if this text is displayed correctly or not. So this is the scenario which I want to test. So the scenario name I'm going to give it as validation of chapter 1 link. So this is the scenario name I want to give. And if you have remembered, we can also add the tags for the features and the scenarios. So let's add the tags as well. So I'm going to say the tag for this feature as demo1 features. So whenever I want to execute all the scenarios in this feature file, I'll be giving this tag demo1 features so that all the scenarios in this feature will be implemented. In the similar way, let's add the tag for this particular scenario as well. So I'm going to say chapter 1 link validation. So this is the tag name I want to give for this particular scenario. Now we can start writing the test steps for the scenario. So the first keyword which we'll be using for defining the preconditions is given keyword. So you'll be using given user navigates to the application. First I have to do is I need to navigate to this application. Later I need to define what is the action I want to perform. So here the action I want to perform is click on this chapter 1 link. So for performing the action we will be using this when keyword. So I will use the when keyword and say when user clicks on chapter 1 link. So when the user clicks on this chapter 1 link I need to verify this text is displayed or not. So for verifying or checking any of the condition you can use the then keyword. So I'll use the then keyword and say verify if the text is displayed correctly. So this is the way I'll be designing the scenarios. First I'll be using the given keyword to give the preconditions which I have got and then whatever action I want to perform I'll be using the when keyword to define those actions and for validations I will be using the then keyword to verify any of the conditions. So this is the way we will be designing the scenarios in the feature file using this Gherkin's language. Let's see what a test runner class is in Cucumber and what is the purpose of it. So once we design any of the scenario next step what we need to do is execute that scenario and in Cucumber we will be using this test runner file for executing the scenarios. So this is the place where the execution actually starts and when you ask what we are going to define in this test runner file. So here you can see that we will be defining the very important annotation which is cucumber options annotation. Under this annotation we will be giving the details of the feature file. So we will be giving the path where the feature files are in our project and apart from that we will be giving the path of the step definition packages as well. So when you ask what a test runner file is test runner file is basically a .java file and the purpose of it is to start the execution. So using this at the rate of cucumber option annotation it is going to execute the scenario which we have defined under this options. Now let's go to our project and create a test runner file for us so that we can execute the scenario which we have created in our previous video. So I'll be opening my Eclipse IDE and as I said before test runner file is basically a .java file. We are going to create that file under this src test java folder. So under the src test java folder first I will be creating a package. So for that you can go to new and then select the package and I am going to give the package name as com.bdd.runner. And click on finish. So here I got the package com.bdd.runner created. And in this I am going to create a new Java file. So you will be going to new and then select the class. And we are going to give the name of the file which is the test runner file. 
and click on finish. So we have got the test runner class created and the first step we have to do is add this at the rate of cucumber options annotation about the class cucumber options. So I have added the annotation. Let me import these options as well. So when you scroll to this value here it is showing import cucumber options. So you will be importing this cucumber options and let's define the options under this. So first is that I am going to add the features under which I have to define the path where my feature files are. So I have got my feature files created under this src test resources and in that in the features folder. So let me add the same src test resources and in that under the features and later we will be adding the blue option where we will be giving the package folder where we have got the step definitions. So step definitions are basically .java files. So we are going to create the step definitions under the folder src test java and I have created a package named as com.bdd.steps so that in this package I am going to add all my step definition files. So let's add this package name under the glue options. So it is of com.bdd.steps and later we have got the tags option. Under this I will be giving the tags of the scenarios which I want to execute. So let's say I have got a feature file and in this I want to execute the scenario validation of the chapter 1 link. So for that we have a tag called chapter 1 link validation. So let me copy this and I am going to paste that in the runner file. So the tag always starts with at the rate of so this is how we add the tags and next we have got plugin option. And under this plugin option, I am going to define the folder path for in the reports which the cucumber will generate. And also, we will be using the keyword pretty so that reports will be generated in a pretty format. And cucumber generates basically two types of reports. So, first is of HTML, and the other one we get it in a JSON format. So, first let's give the HTML file. So, I want the reports to be generated in this target folder. So what I will give is the name of the folder. So it is of target and under this the name of the file I want to be of cucumber reports.html. So this is the name I want to be and also I will be adding the json file path as well. So the file format is of json and I am going to add the same folder name which is target cucumber.json. So I'm going to close the braces for the plugin option. Yeah, so by this we are done with the plugin. So let's add the last option which is of monochrome and let's set the value to true. So when we are using test ng as our test execution engine, we have to extend the abstract test runner class for execution. So let's extend that class. This test runner class is going to extend abstract test ng cucumber test. So this is the class it is going to extend. So let's import this. And for executing the scenarios in testng, we are going to use testng cucumber runner class. So let me create an object for this testng cucumber runner class. Testng cucumber runner with the variable name as testng cucumber. equals to new test ng cucumber runner and it is going to take the parameter with this this dot class. Now we are done with creating the test runner class. So 
we need to let the framework know that this is the class it has to execute. So we have to define this class under the testng.xml file so that it will get to know this is the class it has to execute. So let's give the class name. So under this test tag, I'll be going to the class and I'll give the name of the class as test runner. And let's save it. Now let's try to run this class and see if the scenarios are going to get executed. So for running this class, select the file and then right click on it. Go to run as options and then select the test engine. So it is launching the class and execution has started. So you can see that the execution was completed and it is showing here the scripts got failed. So let's see why the scripts got failed. Here you can see it is showing failed and the reason for the failure is the step user navigated to the application and the two other steps are undefined. So that means that the steps which we have written in this feature file, we haven't implemented those steps in this step definition file. So that is the reason why the steps are getting failed. And this is the basic design format for the BGD framework. So first what we'll do is create the test and run them and let them fail. And then we are going to add the test. Let's see what a step definition file is. And what is the purpose of using the step definition file in the BDD automation framework? You know that in BDD framework, we write the scenarios in the feature file using the Gherkin slides. So if we want to execute the scenarios we write in the feature file, the precondition in Cucumber is to implement those steps. Step definition is basically a .java file and it provides us with the feature of implementing the test steps we have written in the feature file. So for every test step in the feature file, we are going to have it implemented in the respective step definition file. By this, we can say that step definition basically helps us in converting the plain English written test scenarios into the Java code, which will let the application to perform the actions we have defined. So this is the step definition file in theory. So let's go and implement the steps we have designed in our previous videos. So I'm navigating to the Eclipse IDE and so this is the project we have been working from the previous videos and in the previous sessions we have created a feature file with scenario and given the tag as chapter one link validation and also we created a test runner file and tried to run this scenario using the test runner file try to run the file again. Go to run as and then select the test engine and execution has started. So it has picked the scenario and the execution got completed. So here it is showing us total test it has run is 1 and the passed are 0 and the failed are 1. So you can see that the scenario we ran got failed. Let's see why the scenario got failed. So here it is showing us failed the step user navigated to the application and the two other steps are undefined. So it is telling us the test steps we have written in this feature file for the particular scenario. We haven't implemented these test steps in the framework. So that is the reason it got failed. So for implementing these test steps, let's create a step definition file for this. So I have already created a package for the steps in the previous video while creating the test runner file. So in this, let's create a Java file. Go to new, select class, give the name of the class as demo1 steps. And you can click on finish. And this is going to be the step definition file for all the test steps we write in this demo one features file. So how to implement these steps? Cucumber has already provided with the information of how to implement in the console here. So if you see here, it is telling us you can use the annotations at the rate of given, at the rate of when and at the rate of then to implement the steps. And it is also giving us the format in which we can implement it. It is saying use the annotation at the rate of given followed by the test step 
and under that we create a method with the name of the test step and we need to write the code for all the actions we want to perform. So let's copy the same and paste in our step definition file. I'm going to copy it and going to the step definition file and paste it. And it is showing the error here. So when you scroll here, you can see we need to input the annotation given, which is provided by the cucumber. So let's import it and the error got rectified. In the same way, let's do it for when and then as well. And as we have implemented the step, now let's try to run the scenario once again and see if it is getting passed. Go to runner file and then select the test ng. You can see the scenario got failed again. Let's explore what is the issue now. So it is showing failed. So when you click on this demo step Java, it is showing you the line where the execution got failed. It has got failed because it is intentionally throwing the Java pending exception. And we got this line copied from the default Cucumber provided test steps. So Cucumber has intentionally set this exception so that we'll be performing the actions we want to do under this step. So let's try to remove this. And for time being, let's say I want to print in the step. I am in the step one. So I'll be printing out. I am in the step one. So let's do the same for the other two steps as well. Remove line with the exception and paste the print step. In this letter, step two. And in the third, step three. By this, we have removed the exception line and we expect the scenario to pass this time. So let's run the scenario. Go to run as and select test ng. So the execution has started and you can see the color is green and it is showing all the steps has got passed. So here you can see passed and the scenario name is validation of the chapter one link and the total test that ran are one and passed are one and failures are zero. So we have successfully implemented the test steps for the scenario we have written in our feature file. So this is how we create a step definition file and implement the test steps we write in the feature file using Cucumber. And if you observe the comment here, which is created by the Cucumber by default, it is showing us write the code here that turns the phase go into concrete actions. For time being, we have written the print statement, but actually what we need to do in the step definition file is write the Java code that turns this phrase into concrete actions. Let's see how to write the Java code that turns this phrase into the actual actions. Actual actions we want to perform in the application. So in the previous video, we have seen how to create a step definition file and how to implement the test steps we write in the step definition file using the Cucumber provided annotations. So now let's see the actual Java code for performing the actions which we have defined in this test step. So the first step here is user navigates to the application. The actions I want to perform in this step is user has to navigate to the application URL. So this is the URL of application. I want the user to navigate it. So in Selenium, first step for the user to navigate is create a particular browser. So we have to define the Selenium that I want to open the Chrome browser and then navigate to this URL of the application. So the first step we need to define is write the code in Java using Selenium so that the browser gets invoked. And in Selenium for invoking or launching a browser, we have an interface called WebDriver. So this is the interface and we need to create an object for this interface based on the browser we want to use so that the Selenium will launch the browser. And before creating the object of the driver, the other step we need to do is 
get the system property for browser driver we are going to use. So as I mentioned in the web driver architecture, in Selenium, the browser actually can't perform the actions directly and it uses the respective browser driver to perform the actions. So when we want to do particular action in the Chrome browser, we need the Chrome driver in Selenium so that we'll be setting the path of the driver and then create the object of it. Let's go ahead and download the Chrome driver. Let's search download Chrome driver. This is the Chrome driver official site and when you navigate to this site, it is showing you all the available versions of the Chrome driver for you. And you always have to choose the driver version which is same as your browser version. So let's see what my browser version actually is. And the version is 91.0. So here I have to download the same version which is of 91.0. So click on this. And it shows here the list based on the operating systems. And my operating system is of Windows. So I'll be going in the Windows version. And you can see the zip file got downloaded. So let's go to the folder and extract the zip file. Extract files. You got the folder with the name Chrome driver and you can see the exe file here. So this is the Chrome driver which the Selenium will use to perform the actions in the actual driver. So let's go ahead and copy this driver and place it in our project. So I'll be going to my Eclipse IDE and in this as it is related to the application I'm going to test, I'll be creating a folder named driver in SRC test resources. So let's create a folder named as driver. Folder got created successfully and let's place the Chrome driver which we have copied. And when you expand, you can see the exe Chrome driver copied successfully. And the next step we need to do to launch the browser in Selenium is to set the system dot properties for this driver and then create the object of the web driver. So let's set the system properties first, which can be done by using system dot set property it takes the two parameters and in the first parameter we have to define the name of the driver and in the second parameter we are going to define the path of the driver where it is in our project let me define the name of the driver so we have to set it as web driver dot chrome dot driver and in other parameter we need to set the path of the driver so we have copied the driver in src test resources and then in the drivers folder. So let's define the same. It is in src test resources and in drivers folder and the name is exe. By this, we have successfully set the path of the Chrome driver, which it has to use. The next step is to create the object of the driver. And here we are using Chrome as our browser. Let's create the Chrome driver object using the web driver interface in Selenium. So web driver, driver equals to new Chrome driver. Let's scroll to the web driver and import the web driver from Selenium and do the same for the Chrome driver. So by this step, what Selenium does is it creates the object of the driver and launches the Chrome driver for us. And the next step we want to do after launching the browser is we have to navigate to the application and in Selenium, we have got some driver methods we can make use of to navigate to any of the application URL. 
you write the driver dot so these are all the list of the methods which are provided by the selenium for using with the driver and now i want to use the get method so that it will fetch me the url so when you scroll to this get method it is taking one parameter which is the url so this is the url we want to load for the particular application so let me use and in the parameter we will be defining the url of the application we want to navigate so let me copy the url so this is the url of the application and i'm giving it as a parameter for this method now let's try to run the scenario and see if the browser is getting launched and it is navigating to the url we have defined so i'll go to runner file run as test engine. the execution started and it has picked up the scenario and here you can see it has launched the web driver successfully so it is saying starting chrome driver you can see the browser got started and it has navigated and it has navigated the url which we have provided so let's close the browser here you can see the scenario ran successfully and it got passed so these are all the steps we need to follow so to launch a browser in selenium and navigate to the particular application apart from this get driver method in selenium we have many other web driver methods which we can use to manipulate the browser actions so in the coming up videos let's see what are the other web driver methods available in selenium so that's it for this video guys thanks for watching the video hope you learned something new today please do like share and subscribe the channel see you in the next video see how we can use this driver across all the step definition files which i want to use in this particular project now i want to use this same driver in my next step to click on the chapter 1 link and as we created the object for this driver in this particular method we can't use it in the other method of the class so if you want to use the driver in all the methods in this particular class what you can do is you can declare this web driver globally at the class level so by this you can see we can use this driver across any of the method in this particular class but what if we want to use this driver in other classes as well so it can be used in this particular class but in future we are going to add multiple step definition files here so we have only one step definition file but in future we want to add multiple step definition files and we want to use this same driver across all the step definition files so when we declare this web driver in this particular class we can't use this web driver in all the other classes so for that what we are going to do is we are going to create a java class which says web driver utils in our framework so that we are going to give all the driver related actions we want to perform in that class and that can be used in all, any of the step definition file in future by importing that web driver util class so what i'll do is i'll navigate to the source folder src main java and in this i'm going to create a package let's create a package say com dot bdd dot utils and in this package we are going to create all the util files which we want to use in our project so let's click on finish and right now i want to create an util file for the web driver so that that can be used across the framework let me create a new class and we are going to name the class as web driver utils click on finish so this is the web driver utils class and in this we are going to create a method called get driver so every time when we call this method what it gets is the driver instance which is being invoked so let me create a method public static and it is going to return a web driver for me so the return type is web driver and method name is get driver 
let me import the web driver now under this method we have to launch the browser so that it returns the web driver for us and we have already written a code for that in our step definition file here so let's copy this and i'm pasting it under this method so i don't want to quit the driver so i'm removing the step using this step we are telling where our browser driver is and later we will create the object of the web driver and let me create this object at the global level so that that can be used in any of the method in this whole class so i'm creating the object at the class level using this we are going to get the chrome driver launched and later we are maximizing that window which it has launched then we are deleting all the cookies of that particular browser and we can remove this driver dot get step as we want to get only the driver and later we are going to launch the application url now i'll add a return statement which returns me this driver instance now let's go to the step definition file and here in this step the first action we need to perform is get the driver invoked and later we need to navigate to the url of the application so for getting the driver we will be using this get driver method which we have created in the web driver utils let's import this web driver utils class which is under this com dot btd dot utils and then we have web driver utils class so we are going to import all the methods in this web driver utils class so now go to this method and call the driver get driver method for the method get driver we are getting the return type as driver so we need to store the driver which is getting return so for storing it let's create a variable so let me say the variable name as c driver and i'll be storing the driver instance under this c driver now we need to implement this step user navigates to the application so let's call the application url so the driver instance is c driver dot get and let me copy the application url by this step we should be able to navigate to the url of the application successfully now let's run and see if it is working fine go to test runner select run as and test ng you can see the browser got invoked and it has maximized the window and it has navigated to the url which we have defined in this step so in this way we have created a web driver util class and in that we have created a method get driver which returns the driver instance so that we can call it across any of the step definition file in the framework so that's it for this video and in the coming up video let's see how to implement the next step which is user clicks on the chapter 1 link now let's try to implement the second step we have written that is user clicks on the chapter 1 link so under that step what we want to perform is we want the selenium to click on this chapter 1 link and for doing so in selenium it has to do two actions here first is it has to identify where this chapter 1 link is in this whole web page and it has to perform the action of the clicking link using the command which we pass through the code so in today's video let's see how selenium identifies any particular web element in the page so we are saying this is the whole web page so all the elements present in this web page are called web elements and in selenium all the actions that will be performed are by identifying the web element first so for clicking on the chapter 1 link it has to identify where this chapter 1 link is present in this web page and for doing so we have got different techniques used in selenium as we are trying to locate the web elements using these techniques these are called locators in selenium let's see what are the different types of locators available in selenium for us and the first one we have got is by using the id 
So for understanding how it uses the IDE, first let's go to the DOM of the web element and try to identify what the DOM actually looks like. So this is the web application we want to test. And when I right click anywhere and select the view page source, so here you can see it basically is a HTML document. And if you observe, we can see every web element is wrapped up using the HTML tags. So we have the title tag where we got the title of the web application defined. And we also have the body tag. And under the body tag, we have multiple tags defined. And we have got the div tag under which we do have multiple attributes. So here you can see class is one of the attribute and div is the tag which we are using. And if you observe this input tag here, you have got the ID attribute here. So for identifying any of the element in Selenium, it uses this tags and their respective attributes to find those elements. So the first technique we are discussing here is by using the ID, it finds the element. So let's say I have an input tag in which we have got the ID value is username. So Selenium uses this ID attribute to locate this particular element. We have got find element method in driver to identify any particular web element. So we will be writing out driver dot find element. And here we have to define the locator technique which we are going to use. So here we are discussing by ID. So what we will be writing is by dot ID and here we have to define the value of the ID and our value got to be username here and we have to give the same value username to find that element. And the second technique is by class name. So let's say in the input tag you have got a class with the name LA class. So Selenium can identify this element using the class name as well. So for that, what we have to do is write in the below format, which is driver dot find element by and here the technique we are using is class name. So we will be writing by dot class name and we have to give the value of the class name. And the later technique is by using the name attribute. So for a particular web element, if we have got the name attribute defined, we can use that name attribute to find that web element. So what we need to do is just write by dot name and give the value of the name attribute and the later one is by tag name. So what do we mean by this tag name is let's say in your particular web application you have got only one image. So for identifying that particular image you can use the tag of that image which is IMZ which we use in the HTML and we will define that as driver dot find element by tag name and the tag here is img. So using the img it is going to find out that particular web element. The later locator which we have got is link text. So let's say in your web application you have got a link with the name google. So in html it will be in this particular format which is with the anchor tag and we have got the text as google. By using this link text locator, we can find the Google link by writing as driver dot find element by link text and we will be providing the text of the link here, which is the Google and the later one is by partial text. In the previous technique, we have used the whole text of the Google to identify the link and in this we need not to give the whole text and we can give only the partial text of the link. So that can be done by driver dot find element by dot partial link text and we will be giving only the partial text of the link and the next locator technique is by xpath which is a very popular among all. Let's say we have got a link named google and as it is a link it has the anchor tag and to write the xpath to find this link google we write it as by dot xpath which will be followed by the tag of the element and we have got the anchor tag here and that is followed by the square braces with the attribute and the value. So we have got the attribute here, the text and what is the text of the link here? It is Google. So we will be writing the text equals to Google. So this is the format for writing the xpath of the element. 
and the last technique we have got is by css selector let's say we have got a input element which has the id equals to user id and the type is email and the class for this particular element is la class so by using css selector we have to write it as driver dot find element by dot css selector and here dot will be used when you use the attribute of class when you are using class as your css selector you will be giving dot followed by the class name instead let's say if you want to use the id as the css selector you have to give it as hash instead of dot here and followed by the id value which is user id that is all about css selector so these are all the different locator strategies we have in selenium let's try to use those locator techniques to implement the step user clicks on the chapter 1 link so under that step what we want to do is click on this chapter 1 link in the application we have to identify where this chapter 1 link actually is and for doing so the first step we need to do is identify this chapter 1 link using the different locator techniques which we have seen and for viewing the dom properties of this element i'll be right clicking and then select inspect so you can see here the dom got opened and we have a small arrow icon here and when you click on this icon and just scroll to any of the web element in the page you can see the web element is highlighted and when you click on it you can see the dom properties of that element and here we want to identify the chapter 1 link so let me click on this arrow and scroll to the chapter 1 link and you can see here chapter 1 is under the anchor tag and it has the href value which is chapter 1 and the text is chapter 1 and if we see what are the different locator techniques we can use we can use the by link text or by partial link text or by x or by x path so let me go to the code let's remove the spring statement and for identifying the element in selenium we have a method called find elements for the driver let's call the find element method in the selenium so i'll be writing out the driver dot find element so you can see here we have the method find element and what it returns is the first matching web element of the current page so even though there are duplicate matches we found for that particular web element it gives us the first match of the web element found in that current page so let me select the find element method and here we have the parameter to pass is by and when i click on dot here you can see the different locator techniques which the selenium supports so it is by using the class name by css selector by id by link text and by name and by partial link text by text by tag name and by the x path and for finding this web element let's go with the link text and the link text of this web element is chapter 1 let me copy that and paste it here by this code we have identified successfully the chapter 1 link now the next step we have to do is perform the action so under this step what action we want to perform is click on this chapter 1 link and in selenium we have the method called click which clicks on the particular web element so let me select the click method and by this we have successfully implemented the step user clicks on the chapter 1 link so first it identifies the chapter 1 link and then perform the action of click using the click method in selenium now let's run the code and see if it is working fine so for running the code i'll be going to the runner file and right click on it then select run as and test it so the execution has started and it picked up the scenario so the browser got open and it navigated to the application url and here you can see it has clicked on this chapter 1 link let's go to eclipse and see if the scenario got successful the scenario ran successfully and everything is in green 
and here also R1 and passed R1. So, this is how we locate a particular web element in the linear and perform any action on it. Now, let us consider a scenario. What if the user wants to click on the chapter 2 link instead of the chapter 1 link? We have multiple solutions to do that. And the first solution we find is that we will be changing this to chapter 2 link. But by changing this, we also again have to go to the step definition file and also create a new method or modify the existing method. But what if the user wants to click on the chapter 1 link in future? Then again, we have to modify our scenario as well as our step definition file. So, it is very tedious and very difficult to maintain for us in the framework. And this problem can be solved by following the other approach, which is by making this link value as the variable. So, what I need here is, I want to click on this chapter 1 or chapter 2 or chapter 3 based on the text I pass in the feature file. So, let me copy the same text and pass it as a variable here in the feature file. Uh, so, by including it in the quotations, we are making this as the variable value. Now, let us try to run the scenario and see if it is working fine or not. So, the browser got opened and it has navigated to the application, but it does not click on this chapter 1 link. So, let us go to the and see. So, you can see here the scenario got failed. So, let us see what is the issue in the console. So, here it is saying you can implement the step. So, we have not implemented this step and we need to implement the step. So, in the step definition file, so this step will work only if it has the chapter 1 link. But we have made this chapter 1 as the variable now. So, what we can do is it is telling us the format as well how we have to make it as a variable value. So, let us copy this same and paste it here. So, here you are passing string as the variable value to the step. Now, let us try to run again. To run as and then test ng. Let me close the previous browser. So, the browser got open and it navigated to the application, but still it does not click on the link. So, let us go to console again and see what is the issue. You can see here the scenario got failed. But let us see what is the issue. So, here it is saying the step is defined with the zero parameter. What it actually means is that here you are passing a parameter which is a string. The same parameter you need to pass in the method of the step as well. So, let us pass the string and let us name the string value as link name. So, here by this we are passing this string value as the parameter. And now, in the code, previously what we have written is, it has to click on this chapter 1 link only. But now, we want to click on the link based on this link name which we are getting from the feature file. We have to replace this chapter 1 with the link name. Let us save and run again. It opened the browser. And you can see here now it has clicked on the chapter 1 link. And initially, what our requirement is, let us say if I want to modify my chapter 1 to chapter 3. Now, do I need to go to step definition and modify? So, let us run and see without modifying anything in the step definition file. Go to run as and test ng. And let us see now it has to click on the chapter 3 link without modifying any value in the step definition file. The browser got opened and it navigated to the application and it has clicked on this chapter 3 link. By this, we have successfully incorporated our test scenario with the variable test steps. This is how we have to pass the variable value in your test scenario and run without modifying any value in the step definition file. But let us say, what if the user wants to click on the 
chapter 1 link and the chapter 2 link as well. So, we need to pass multiple test data here. In this scenario, we are able to pass only one set of test data. That means the user can click on the only one link at a time. Let's say if the user wants to click on multiple links. So, I want to click on the chapter 1 link as well as I want to do the same scenario for the chapter 2 link. And for that, the solution we have is first is of let's copy the same scenario and paste it here and modify the chapter 3 to chapter 4. But what if I want to click on six sets of test data in the similar way? You can't create a six scenarios again. It increases your feature file size. So what we can do is pass the six sets of test data to this one scenario itself. So how do we pass the test data in feature file using Cucumber? So for that, we have a keyword called examples. So using this examples keyword, we can define what are the values we want to pass as the test data in the feature file. Here I want to pass link name as the test data. So let's say the value is of link name and we need to keep it in a braces. Let's say link. So the same value we will be passing under our examples. It should always be separated with the pipe. And now Let's pass the actual test data values for this particular test data field. So, first set is of chapter 1. We need to pass the test data also with the start and the end pipe. Copy this. Six sets of. So, I want to click on chapter 1, chapter 2. Chapter six. Now, what it actually does is it navigates to the application, then clicks on the chapter one and verify if the text is displayed. And again, it navigates to the application, clicks on the chapter one link, and then verify if the text is displayed correctly or not. Let's run and see if this is working. Go to run as and select test ng. The execution got started. It has and you can see it has clicked on the chapter 1 link. Now it has to open the other browser and yeah, it has clicked on the chapter 2 link. So it is second set of test data we have passed. So in the similar way, it has to do for 6 times. So it has to click on the chapter 3. 1 link, chapter 2 link, chapter 3 link, chapter 4 link and chapter 5 link and chapter 6 link. When you open the third one, you can see it has clicked on the chapter 3 link. When you open the fourth browser instance, you can see it has clicked on the chapter 4 link and has opened the fifth browser instance. And for the fifth browser, it doesn't click on the chapter 5 because there is no chapter 5 link actually to do. And the later is we have the sixth browser instance that is open and it also doesn't find the chapter 6 link. So it also can't click on this chapter 6 link. So let's close all this browser. And in the console you can see here it ran six scenarios and out of which four were passed and two were failed. These two were failed because it is not able to find chapter 5 and chapter 6 link. Let's modify our test data so that it doesn't find the chapter 5, we have chapter 8 and we did not have the chapter 6 at all. Now it has to open all the 6 browser instances and click on the each particular link based on the test data we are passing. Let's run again. And then NG. So now it has to execute our scenario 5 times. Open the first browser instance and click on chapter 1 link. And then the second browser instance and the 2 link. And we have third browser instance. And it clicked on the chapter 3 link. So we have 
fourth instance with the chapter 4 link clicked and we should have the last one with the chapter 8 link clicked have the last one also and it clicked on the chapter 8 link. now let's close all this and see if our scenario ran successfully so now you can see here the scenario ran successfully the total tests that ran are 5 and the passed are 5 so this is how we pass multiple sets of test data in our feature file using the examples keyword and run one scenario for this multiple test data let's try to develop a new scenario into this video so let's see what is the scenario we want to design in our application so let's say i want to click on the chapter 1 link and in this chapter 1 link let's see if the user is able to click on this radio button so here we have got a radio button and let's see if the user is able to click on this so in general while designing the scenarios what we do is we maintain a separate feature file for each and every functionality so now here we are trying to design the scenario for the chapter 1 page so let's create a new feature file for the chapter 1 page so let's modify this as home page dot features and as we are trying to design the scenario for the chapter 1 page let's create a new feature file with the name chapter 1 select file let's name it as chapter 1 validations dot feature so let's remove all of this and first what we need to add is the tag of the feature file let's say it as chapter 1 validations as this feature file contains all the chapter 1 page related validations we can add the tag as chapter 1 validations at the feature level and let's give the feature keyword and the description of the feature this validation of chapter 1 functionalities so now let's try to design the scenario and for that first let's add the tag for the scenario so here we are trying to validate the radio button so let's say radio button validation and the scenario description we are going to add using the scenario keyword and let's say validation of radio button for the chapter 1 page so that is going to be the description of the scenario now we have to design the scenario using the given when then and end keywords so here what we have got is going to be under the given keyword so what we have got here is the url of the application so what we need to do is get the browser initiated and the browser navigates to the url of the application and if you observe in the home page dot feature in the given user navigates to the application we did the same so what we did is when you go to the step definition file here you can observe we have initialized the browser and then got to the URL of the application so what we can do is copy the same step instead of writing the new one so let's copy the same test step and then what we need to do is once we navigated to the application we need to click on the chapter 1 link clicking on the chapter 1 link is also developed under this user clicks on the link so let's copy the same and paste it now so when the user clicks on the chapter 1 link the next step we have to verify is we have to click on this radio button so let's add with the end and then say user clicks on the radio button later we have to validate if the radio button is enabled so we say 
So, we add that under the then keyword. We will be adding it as verify if the radio button is enabled. And let us try to give the test data for the link name with the examples keyword. So, let us add the examples as well. So, test data variable is link name. And right now we are going to click on the chapter 1. So, link name is going to be chapter 1. So, we have designed this test scenario successfully. Now, we know that the next step is to implement the test steps for the test scenario which we have designed. So, we have already seen that user navigates to the application is common across the two feature files and also when you observe, so for any of the test scenario we are going to write, we need the browser to be initiated and also we need to navigate to the URL of the application. So, this particular test step is going to be common across all the feature files. So, for organizing these type of common test steps, what we can do is go to steps package and then we create a new Java class which is common steps. Click on finish. Now, what we have to do is under this file, we can add all the common steps we have across the application. So, we can see that under both the feature files and also for any of the feature file we are going to develop, this step is going to be common. So, from the demo one steps dot feature, let us remove this and let us add it in the common steps file. Move this web driver as well. So, even in future also, if we observe that there is any other step which is common across all the feature files, we can just go ahead and come to this common steps.java file and add those test steps under this file. And here, when you observe again, the web driver variable is throwing us the error because we have defined the web driver under the common steps.java file. And we, we are not able to use that as we defined under the class level of this common steps. So, we want this driver to be used across all our framework. So, for that what we can do is instead of declaring this web driver variable under the class level, we can declare across the framework as a global variable so that this can be used across all the files in the framework. So, let us go ahead and create a global variables file. Let us go to src test java. And under this, let us create a package com dot mdd dot variables and let us maintain all our variables under this package. So, here what we are going to do is create a new file which is java file and let us name it as global variables. Click on finish. So, we got the Java file created and let us move this web driver variable from the common steps file to global variables. So, this C driver variable now can be used across the framework in all the files by importing this uh, global variables class. So, in the common steps, let us try to import the global variables class. It is going to be static and com dot dot variables. And under this, my class name is global variables and let us import all the variables under it. So, now you can see the errors got rectified. Let us do the same in this demo one steps.java file as well. Let us import the global variables class. And you can see now the errors got rectified. As we have modified the web driver variable, now let us try to run and see if this scenario is working fine or not. Let us copy the tag of the scenario and go to test runner file and paste it and now let us run the test runner file. Here we have not implemented these two steps of user clicks on the radio button and verify if the radio button is enabled. So, these two steps we have not implemented yet but let us run and make sure that the browser is initialized and is able to navigate to the application as we have moved this 
browser variable to the global variables. So, you can see we are able to initialize the browser and it has navigated to the application and also it has clicked on this chapter 1 link. So, it has worked till this step and when you observe in the console, you can see these two steps will not be implemented. So, it is saying you can implement the steps using the snippet. So, these two steps are not yet implemented. So, we need to implement these two steps. So, let us copy these two and paste it in our step definition file. So, for this, let us create a new step definition file which covers the validations for the chapter 1 page. So, let us name it as chapter 1 validations steps. And let us paste these two steps. Let us import the annotations when and then. So, in this way, instead of creating a new driver for every particular step definition file, what we can do is we have created a global variables.java file and under this we have declared the variable at the global level and we are using the same driver reference in every step definition file by importing it from this global variables class. In a similar way, in future, if you want to use any of the variable which is common across all the feature validations, we can declare that variable under the global variables file and then we can use it across all the files in the framework. Apart from this, we have also seen why to create the common steps.java file. So, whatever the test steps which are common across all the feature files and in this case we have user navigates to the application which is common across all the feature files we have added that test step implementation under the common steps so that this can be used across all the features in our framework let's see how to organize our step definition files more effectively if you observe in the step at the rate of given user navigates to the application. So, what we are doing here is we are initializing the driver and navigating to the URL of the application. So, to organize this step definition more effectively, what we can do is create a class. Let us name it as app access and we can maintain all the application access related methods in this. We can move these two steps to that file and call the method from the app access and use it in the step definition file. So, by this the advantage is that we are going to reduce the test steps in our step definition file and we will not be using the driver directly and we are calling our driver from the methods in the app access dot java file. So, let us go to src test java folder and under this let us create a new package let us name it as com.brd.implementations and under this let us create a new java file and let us name it as app access. So, under this file what we are going to do is maintain all the methods which are related to accessing the application. So, what are the methods that come under accessing the application? So, those are initializing the driver, getting the driver and then navigating to the application URL. Let us go to app access.java file and let us create a method like static and let us say the method name as access application. So, the first step we need to do is we need to check first if the driver is initialized or not. So, how we will be checking if the driver is initialized or not? What we can do is we have a reference variable which we have created in this global variables in the previous video. Let us import the driver variable static com. variable. So, we have imported the C driver variable. Now, we write a condition to check if the driver is initialized first. So, to check that what we need to do is let us say if driver is equals to null. 
or c driver dot to string let's convert this driver to string and let's check if it contains null here if any of the condition in the if statement is true that means the driver is null and we doesn't have the driver initialized yet so we need to call the driver and for calling the driver in the step definition we have written a method so let's cut this method and paste it in the app access using this get driver which we have written in the web driver variables we are initializing the driver and calling it to the app access so now we got the web driver initialized under this app access the next step we want to do is navigating to the url of the application once the driver is initialized so for that let's create a new method public static void and let's name the method as open url under this the action we want to perform is navigating to the url which we have defined so go to common steps and we are doing the same under this so let's copy this and paste it in the app access so under this method we are navigating to the url of the application now we have got a separate method to navigate to the url of the application so let's call this method under the access application now under this access app method what is happening is it it will go and check if the driver is null then it will be initializing the driver for us and once it is initialized then we are opening the url of the application now let's go to common steps dot java file and call the same method which is app access and we need to import the class so let's import the app access class or not implementations and under have app access the class is imported successfully and we are able to use the access application method here so by this we have reduced our steps in our step definition file and our step definition file looks more organized for us so in future if we want to modify any of the values let's say url of the application we will be doing it under this app access instead of doing it in the step definition file now let's try to run and see if this is working fine let's go to test runner select run as and test ng so you can see the browser got initialized and also we are able to navigate to the application that means the method which we have defined here which is initializing the browser and navigating to the application is working successfully so far we have seen how to design a test scenario in the feature file using the gherkin language and also how to implement the design test scenario using the step definition files and how to run the test using the test runner file and apart from that we have also seen few other util files like creating a global variables and web driver util files and app access dot java file for accessing the application in today's video let's try to implement the page object model in our framework before starting the implementation let me give the overview of what page object model basically is and why we want to implement it in our framework page object model is basically a design pattern in selenium and in that we create the object repository for storing all the web elements based on the pages so this is the application we want to test and till now we have designed few scenarios so let's say we have designed a scenarios in this home page that clicking on the chapter 1 link and apart from that we have also designed few scenarios to validate the elements in the chapter 1 so when you follow the page object model pattern what we need to keep in mind is that we will be storing all the web elements in an object repository and that object repository will be created based on the pages 
so while you test this home page you store all the web elements of the chapter 1 chapter 2 and chapter 3 and so on all of this will be stored in a particular object repository which we call it as a home page or java file and similarly when you try to validate the web elements present in the chapter 1 page so we will be creating a separate object repository naming it as chapter 1 page or java and we will be storing all the web elements in that particular java file so this is what we do in a page object model pattern now let's try to implement the page object model in our automation framework so the first step we need to do is create separate classes for storing the web objects based on the pages so for that let's go to eclipse and go to src test java folder and here let's create a new package first and let's name the package as com.bdd.pages and under this we need to create the classes based on the pages of our application so let me create a new class and let's name the class as home page so that we can store all the web elements of the home page in this class let me name it as home page dot java now the next step is to create the object repository for all the web elements in this home page so first let's try to locate the object of this chapter 1 link in our home page and in selenium we can find the web elements by using by and let's name the reference variable for this chapter 1 locator as chapter 1 link equals to so we know in selenium we have got multiple locator techniques to identify and the element we want to identify is a link so we can identify it easily using the link text so let's use the link text to identify it by dot and under this we are using link text and the text of the link is chapter 1 so we have created the reference variable for this and in the similar fashion let's try to identify the other links as well so let me copy this and i'll be pasting it and let's name it as chapter 2 link and the text is going to be chapter 2 and in the similar fashion for the chapter 3 link so in this way we can identify all the web elements in the home page and maintain them under this home page dot java file now let's go to the test scenario we want to test in this home page so it is of user navigates to the application and user clicks on the link and the link name we are providing under this test data and then verify if the text is displayed correctly so in the previous sessions in the previous sessions we have already written the step definition file to implement all these test steps so let's go to the step definition file so under steps and home page steps.java if you see here we have written the code to identify this link in the step definition file only but now we are trying to implement the page object model so what we can do is let's go to our home page or java file and let's create a method to implement the logic of clicking on this link public and here we are trying to click on the link so let's name it as click on home page links and this method is going to take a parameter which is the link name so which link it has to click on we are passing it through this link name let's go to the step definition file and we'll be copying this code let's paste it under this method and we can call this method in the step definition file to perform this action so let's go to step definition file and we can call this method and the parameter it is going to take is link name and here it is showing us the error because it can't identify the method we have created in this home page for that what we need to do is import this home page dot java class so let's import the home page dot java class 
which is under com dot pdd dot pages and this home page. Let's run this scenario and verify if the changes we have done are working fine. So let me copy the tag of the scenario. Go to test runner dot java. Under the tags, we will be pasting. We already had the tag. Now let's go to test runner dot java file. Select run as and test engine. The browser got open successfully and it has navigated to the application and it has clicked on the chapter one link. We can see the scenario got passed. So by this, we have successfully implemented the page object model pattern for the home page. Let's say in future we want to test the. So for that, the first step we need to do is go to pages package and under this, we are going to create a new class. And here the page which we want to test is chapter one page. So let's name it the same chapter one page dot Java. And in this class, we can maintain all the locators related to this chapter one page. So now let's discuss what is the advantage we get by implementing this page object model pattern. If you observe here, we are maintaining all the locators related to the home page at a single place. So let's say in future, if there is change in the link of this chapter one, and if we want to make sure our test scripts are running fine, we need to change the respective locator as well. So for that, we need to come to this locator and change to the new name. And when we follow the page object model pattern, we can identify this locator easily based on the pages because here we are storing all the locators based on the pages so when there is a change in the home page locator so we can directly go to this home page or java file and search for that locator instead of searching it in all the files of the framework so in this way we can easily maintain the locators in our framework so this is the main advantage of using the page object model pattern and the other advantage is it provides us with the more readability. So here the code is more readable like we have all the locators at one place and we have all the methods to perform the action at the other place. We can easily understand the code by following this pattern. So this is the other advantage of using the page object model pattern. So by this we are done with the page object model pattern. see how we can maintain our framework more effective. We have seen how to implement the page object model to make our framework more effective, reliable and maintainable. So this is the scenario we want to test. And when we go to the respective step definition file, we can see that instead of implementing all the code logic in the step definition file, we have created a method in our home page.java class and in that method, we have added the logic of performing the respective action. But let's say if we want to make this code more reliable and readable. So what we can do is maintain all the Selenium related functions in one particular file. So let's name the file as keywords.java class. And in that particular class, we can create all the actions we want to perform in selenium so that class will in specific have methods which are related to the selenium actions whether it is clicking on a link or sending the text to the input or getting the text from the element so all of these methods we can maintain in a one specific file and we can import those methods in the framework wherever we want to use the selenium action first let's go to src main java so this file is kind of util files for us because we are trying to declare all the methods and we are going to utilize those methods whenever we need. So we are going to create that file under our utils package. So let's go to utils package and create a new class. So let's name this class as selenium reusable function. and click on finish. So under this class, we are going to create the list of methods which we want to use with the Selenium. So in the current test scenario, we want to click on this link. So we are using this click method of the Selenium. 
So this same click method, we can create it under this Selenium reusable functions and then we can call it in our homepage.java club. So let's go to Selenium reusable functions and let me create a method. And let's name it as click. So in this click function, I want to pass the parameter as the web element which I want to click. So here we are trying to click on this chapter one link. Let's pass this web element locator as the parameter here. Let's pass the parameter as by the web element. Let's import the by in Selenium and under this method, the action we want to perform is from the driver, we find the web element and then click on that web element. The driver dot find element. So let's import the driver first. The driver is under our global variables. Import. variables so we can see the driver and under the driver we are going to find the element and it is going to find the element by this web element which we are passing as the parameter driver dot find element and then it has to perform the action of click and this click method we can use in our homepage.java class. So here we are avoiding to write the driver related methods and we are declaring them in this selenium reusable functions and we are going to call those methods here. The method name is click. So for this click method we have to pass the parameter which is by. So let's pass the parameter by and let's name the variable as link equals to and the locator technique which we are going to hear is by using the link text so by dot link text and we are getting the text of the link from this parameter which is link name let's pass the parameter so let's pass this link as the parameter in our click method so it is still showing the error saying method is undefined so that means it is not able to recognize the method we have written in this selenium reusable function so for that we need to import the selenium reusable functions class which is under com dot pdd dot details selenium reusable function so all the errors were gone now Let's run and see if the scenario is working fine with this code. Go to test runner, select run as and then test ng. So the browser got open and we can see it has navigated to the application and clicked on the chapter 1 page. Let's close the browser and when you observe here in the test ng results, we got the scenario in green. So that means the scenario got passed. And when you see in the console, we have one scenario run and the scenario got passed. So in the similar way, we can create multiple methods for performing the Selenium related actions. So let's say we have another step, verify if the text is displayed correctly. So let's go to the step definition file and we can see the method here, verify if the text is displayed correctly. So let's try to implement this step using the changes we have done in our framework so that is implementing the page object model pattern also using the selenium reusable functions file so let's remove this print statement first and here we have to identify if we are getting this text correctly so let's identify this text first go to inspect and then click on this arrow let's try to write the x path for this It is under the dev tag. The class name of the tag is main heading. So we got the match of the X path, which is one. 
copy this and this web element is basically related to the home page of the application. So now we need to go to our home page dot Java class and let's define the variable for this locator by and let's name it as by title equals to by dot. So the locator technique we have used here is XPath. We are using XPath to identify this web element. And then comes the creation of the method to add the code logic. So let's create a method. Verify title. And under this method, what we want to do is get the text of this web element and verify if it is equal to the expected value. Here we need to get the text of this web element. So that is related to the selenium function. So let's go to our selenium reusable functions file and under this let's create a new method to get the text of any web element. So let's name it as get text. It is going to take the parameter as by and let's And under this method, we want to get the text of that particular web element. And instead of returning nothing, let's return that text. It is going to be a string. And let's get the text first. String text is equals to C driver dot find element. We are going to find it using the web element. And for getting the text in Selenium, we have a method called get text. This method will return the text of that particular web element. So we are going to get the text of that element using this line and we are going to store that value in this text variable. And let's return this text variable. So we have successfully implemented the code logic to return the text for any of the web elements. So in future, let's say if we want to validate not the home page. So let's say if I want to validate if this text is displayed. So for that, you need not to write a new method. We can reuse this method with the only change of web element. So we can pass this web element and this method will return as the text. So let's use this method to get the text in our home page dot Java. Get text. And this method is going to take the parameter which is the title here. So this method is going to return us a string value. So let's store that as the actual text. So string actual value equals get text of title. And instead of returning void, let's return this actual string value. Turn. Let's change the return type to string. Now we can call this method in our step definition file. So let's go to the step definition file. Call this method. So this is going to return us the actual value. So let's name it as actual value equals to. And now we want to verify that with the expected text. So let's declare the expected text as expected value equals to. So let's say the value is the same. So we are expecting it as to return selenium beginner sky. So we have the actual value which is coming from the application and then we have the expected value. So let's assert that if both the values are equal. Assert dot equals. We are going to select this one. Release. Now let's run our scenario. Run as and test ng.
So it has clicked on this chapter one link and let's go to console and see the scenario got passed. So you can see here one scenario ran and it got passed. And when you click on the test ng results, you can see everything is in green. So this is the way of creating the scenarios and maintaining the code more effectively in our framework. So that is by using the page object model and storing all the locators at one place and creating the methods for the logic we want to perform under this home page instead of writing them in the step definition file and also creating the separate methods which are related to the selenium in this selenium reusable functions. So in this way, the code is more readable for us and we can maintain that easily in our framework. This is how we can create the real-time automation BDD framework. There are many more enhancements we can do to this framework. Hope this concept covers the basic components we need for a automation framework. Congrats on making till the end. So that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching the video. I hope now you got enough confidence on how we can create an automation framework from the scratch for any web application. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please do like, share and subscribe the channel for more videos like this.